What's going on, everybody? As you can see in the top middle of my screen, I have a little text HUD thing coming up saying ability one, zero seconds. And if I hit my shift key, I will not wraith form, I will jump. That's a custom ability I added. And you can see it's now ticking down time until zero. And if I were to do that again, I can't do it again. I'm hitting the button here and it is going down. But once it hits zero, then I can do it again. This is a requested video for a follow-up for the adding your own abilities or your own keys in Overwatch. So I'm going to jump right into explaining how this is done. Um, so if you want to learn more about how these controls and these HUD displays work, then stay tuned. This video's got a lot about that. So I have four blocks here. Um, the first one, I just like to add this to basically all my programs. It's called a knit, and it's just setting my starting values that this will just happen once. It'll set them and then move on. I have two things I want to do. First, I want to disable the normal ability. As you could probably saw that I couldn't wraith form because that ability was just disabled. And then I also have set global variable um, A, which we will use for our countdown time. And we're going to start that at zero. Then in ability one, this is where I actually apply that impulse. So two conditions need to be met. First, if is button held for the event player, ability one is equal to true. So for the player that we're dealing with, if we're hitting the ability one button, um, and then also our countdown time needs to be zero, as you saw before. Then if that is true, then we apply our impulse. So apply impulse is just adding a force upward to cause that super jump. And then we're going to set the variable that is our countdown time to six. Now it'll stay at six unless we do something about it. So we have our next block, decrement cooldown. So this checks to see for each player if their cooldown is greater than one. And technically I think it's supposed to be zero, but for some reason that made me made the numbers skew off a little bit so I have it be one. So if we still have cooldown time, then we will wait a second, then we will subtract, and this is how this works. So we'll take our variable and set it to a subtraction expression that subtracts what we originally had by one. And then we will check to see if we're still greater than one and if we are we'll repeat this again so now it'll be decrementing but it'll there'll be a second in between each decrement now last thing is the hud this gets kind of complicated but if you really want to know how the strings and bringing them together to make a hud works then um i think i figured it out so you're going to need an action called create hud text and it's going to be visible just to us but here's where it gets a bit complicated, and I'm going to explain this. So, header is the thing that we're displaying, the main thing that we're displaying. And whenever you pick string for this, a few options will pop up. So, uh, you click string, and then you get a box underneath it that says string 0, 1, 2. And this is because string is going to be what you actually display, but you can incorporate some of the other boxes into it. So if you want to say display ability one colon uh, the actual countdown time, you have to split it into two different strings. So what the, this first super string is saying is do whatever is in box or the block zero, put a colon, and then do whatever's in block one. So now we split and we go into block zero first, and this is another string with just an actual word. So you can't type in your own things, you have to pick one of these predefined values uh, that Overwatch has given you. So I just said ability of one, because that's one keyword, and then jumping down to, I set the rest to null because we don't need them, and then jumping down to block one, we have our global variable. So now it'll be ability one colon 
our countdown time. I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try and explain them. I really do go through those. Um, now, there's a special little finicky thing with this that I'm going to use variable, variable B for. So, um, we basically want to display it and then wait a little bit and then re-display it because the value might change. So, um, we create the text, then we wait a second, and then we destroy the text, and then we'll loop back. But the problem with this is um, sometimes we'll make too many boxes because, um, like, it'll infinitely trigger. So this is an ongoing event meaning it will continue to check all the time. So we'll have like, they'll all be disappearing after one second, but they'll be they'll keep creating them at infinite speed. So what we can do is have a variable that's kind of like a true false variable that tests to see if we have something displayed or not. So as you can see, this condition is saying, only do this if we don't have anything displayed, variable B, and then as soon as we do this, we're going to set it to true, saying we do have something displayed. Then we'll display it, wait a second, and then we'll set it back to false and then destroy it. Meaning in this time when we're waiting a second, we can't have another instance of it pop up. Um, so that's the code. I will go ahead and share this for you guys as soon as I figure that out. Um, but I hope you guys uh, found this video helpful. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe this video, it really helps out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll be working on more videos about how to use the Workshop Editor in Overwatch. Thanks and have a great day.